Welcome to this edition of the Biker Angle. But before we begin... Yeah! And welcome everyone to this segment of the Biker Angle. It is 923 of 2018. I want to say thanks for everyone for getting in on our live yesterday, man. It was a hell of a time in the chat room and stuff like that. Actually, I thought about doing these live chats every Saturday at 10.30 uh, Central Standard Time in the morning, but thought about it all night, and I actually got an email from Clayton, and uh, I appreciate this, Clayton. Uh, I'm going to be doing them at 9 o'clock. That way, everybody's up, getting their coffee, we can all get in the chat, going around, and uh, getting our viewpoints out there, so we're going to be doing the chats at 9 o'clock in the morning instead of 10.30 in the morning. Uh, so, thanks again, Clayton, for the suggestion, and again, thanks everyone for being a part of the chat. It's fun, and I uh, get to learn a lot of good stuff from everybody out there. This week's live chat's going to be about uh, RCs and how they tried to avoid getting the blessings from the dominant. So we're going to talk about that. Actually, one of the subscribers uh, mentioned that topic, so I think that's going to be a good topic. But let's go into our today's subject, and that is the Mongols again down in Fort Worth, Texas. And I want you to take a look at this video. <laughs> it seems like... Everybody with the page are uh, that the businesses are loving the Mongols. Well, then you see this video of a cop's response to club members pulling up uh, to a leather shop, and I don't th I don't know if it was the Mongols that pulled up or another club, but Jesus Christ, they come out all force with uh, just because a bunch of guys pulled up in colors. But take a look at this video, and we'll go over it in a second. Right now. Uh, you want to talk about drawing a crowd of police cars, we drew a crowd of, we had some, uh, had some club riders pull up, and it brought out all this here. As you can see, we got more cops here than you do motorcycle club riders, so trust me, it's been a... It's been a uh, unbelievable, unbelievable how many of us here, but there is a large number of them here, more cops than there is uh, motorcycle club members. Uh, this is where we at. Andrew Wilson back here. I guess everything checked out all right. Everything, everything is going to be going good now, so... Maybe they'll leave here soon, and we'll get back to uh, get back to normal business up here at Wilson's. Anyway, this is a uh, this is what this is the scene that's going on right now at Wilson's. I tried to go live earlier. For some reason, my live video didn't post, and they were absolutely. As you can see, the owner of the bar loved the Mongols being there. His only worry was having enough beer and stuff like that. And this is something that I've said in the previous videos, and I always say, whenever the bikers show up, club member, independent, what have you, you're always going to make some money. So it looks like that guy's making a lot of money there. But what did you guys think about the response from the cops, man? What it was, there only eight or nine freaking bikes sitting there, and you have a freaking army of cops showing up? 
it, it's just ridiculous, man. That's not protecting the community. That's not being proactive. That's just trying to show your dick size. That's what it comes down to. You know, those baloney fucking uh, dicks over there. <laughs> and that's what I call them, baloney ponies. You know, they had to show their dick size. And there was nothing going on. And even the guy who was recording the video was saying, what the hell's with all the, you know, there's these cops. There's more cops here than there are bikers. So there's to a point where it gets ridiculous with the cops. And I don't know what they're putting in the water down there in Texas, but this seems to be the same old, same old when it comes to cops in Texas, man. You know, you not only had Waco 93, but you had the Waco Twin Peaks shootout. And then you have this. It's like they are, they never fucking do anything right. It's like, who the hell put these guys together, man? What the hell is these police chiefs thinking down there? It's just really freaking ridiculous. But here's an article about uh, this Moggle stuff coming down in uh, Fort Worth. And actually, the Moggles uh, made a response, so I wanted to make sure I got that out to you guys. And the article is, I think it's from KWTV, I'm not for sure, I actually don't got the source on me right now, you'd actually see the article on HarleyLiberty.com, but it's titled, Who Are They Mongols Anyway? Here, what the biker club says about being in Fort Worth. On Saturday night, members of the Mongols Motorcycle Gang, you see how they put the gang in there? You know, it's not me saying it, so don't chew my head off, but that's what the article says. Stood outside a bar in uh, Fort Worth Stockyards talking with bar employees and passerbys. A woman across the street appeared to take a picture of the four men who were all wearing black leather vests with patches saying Mongols and Lifetime Member. Two of them, one of whom introduced himself as Blade, yelled across the street, quote, Wait, take another one. End quote. He said, posing with his arm around another member and smiling broadly. You notice he said smiling broadly? You know, they were having fun. They were joking around with the woman. Uh, the woman put her phone down and walked away. The Mongols have been called the, quote, most violent and dangerous, end quote, outlaw motorcycle gang in the nation by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosive Agents according to the Department of Justice website. Yeah, the ATF calling them the most dangerous. And how many kids did you assholes kill in Waco? But anyway, I'm not going to go there. On Friday and Saturday, local police beefed up their presence in the Fort Worth stockyards after ATF warned the Mongols were planning a rally there. An ATF intelligent note warned the Mongols were planning a run in the stockyards Friday or Saturday. The notice, copies of which were sent to the Star-Telegram, well, this is where your article came from, the Star-Telegram, stated the gang members were expected to start arriving late Thursday, and there could be anywhere from three to 700 bikers. The four Mago members outside White Elephant Bar on Saturday night said all of this is all a misconception. And that's the, the bar that was in the video was uh, the White Elephant Bar. None of the men wanted to provide their names. Only one who had on a backwards hat and others described as their boss provided a nickname, Blade. Quote, we like to go places and hang out with our brothers and spend money in local shops, he said. End quote. He said... He was not allowed to say how many members were at the stockyards, but pulled up a picture of a group from the night before on his phone. About 40 men, most wearing black leather, stood on a stage at Stockyards Bar. He pointed at signs on nearby doors that banned, quote, club-affiliated attire of any kind, end quote. He said those signs kept the Mongols out of most shops and bars in the stockyards. Quote, I went into a shop to buy a Fort Worth t-shirt for my daughter and wife, and they wouldn't let me in. I'm fine with it, but my wife is going to be like, where's my souvenir? Blade said. Well, you know, for those shops that ban the bikers just because of colors, you weak-ass pieces of shit, you lost the sale. It's on you.
you know, maybe you want to stick to your 80- or 90-year-old tourist instead of making some money. But, hey, it's your business. You to do what the hell you want to do, man. If you want to be freaking listen to the cops and be scared all the freaking time and worry about the little monsters in the fucking closet, that's on you, man. <laughs> it's on you. You ain't making no money. The only place that let them in, he said, was the White Elephant Saloon and the Love Shack. There we go, man. Everybody out in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, you gotta go see the White Elephant Saloon and the Love Shack. Kudos to you guys. The Saloon and Love Shack manager, Bill Kolomensky, said the Mongols have been great customers. Great customers, repeat. Quote, he says, they're very respectful. They've been very kind to my employees. That's the kind of customers we want. He said. Another Mongols member whose vest said, <laughs> quote, Florida on the back. I love how these reporters are. You can tell the read out of the fucking journalism school. Said the stigma against them is created by the media and shows like Sons of Anarchy, which portray motorcycle clubs as lawless and violent. Well, he's got it on point, man. The media, that's how they fucking portray everybody in the club scene. Quote, we like to spend a ton of money and have a good time, he said. We're just like any other organization, end quote. Another member who was wearing a black and white hat and sunglasses on his neck chimed in. Quote, we're not bullies, we're not disrespectful, we tip and we tip well, he said. We're a brotherhood. We are a family, end quote. In their note, ATF, you know, alphabet soup, wrote one of their concerns was possibly violence between the Mongols and their rival, the Banditos Gang. It, they're talking like this is the fucking Wild West down there, these reporters. Uh, although only operating in Texas for a short period of time, violence has already transpired between the two adversaries in Houston, Fort Worth, and Dallas, the ATF stated in its note. Officer Brad Perez, a Fort Worth police spokesman, said in a previous interview... Fort Worth police were not expecting any issues between the two groups at this weekend's rally. Quote, several representatives of the Fort Worth Police Department have spoken to the local Mongols chapter president, and he assured us that the local Banditos chapter has been made aware of this gathering and that they do not expect any issues, end quote, Perez said in an email. This concern with this particular gathering is the number anticipated to participate. However, the four members said law enforcement was overreacting to the Mongols' presence. Well, you can see that in the fucking video, didn't you? Uh, quote, more police officers showed up here than Mongols, the man with the Florida vest said. Which, uh, <laughs> that's backed up. You know, the guy wanted to go live, but I guess the, he, he couldn't get it to work. But it's good video, and thanks for ever who took that video and got uh, the word out on uh, how these police are reacting to everybody. Quote, we have not issued any advisories to avoid the stockyards this weekend due to motorcycle club rallies. We have additional officers working the stockyards this weekend, the Post stated. Well, you know, that's, that's great having the extra cops there, but do you guys got to really be dicks and, you know what, show your dick everywhere? You know, put that fucking thing away, man. Save it, take it home, you know, maybe play with your wife's titties or something. You don't need to be showing your dick and fucking unloading the load so, you know, you get off on fucking uh, harassing the fucking mean old big bikers at the fucking stockyards. Come on, man. Really? In June, 21 members and associates of... uh Tennessee chapter of Mo the Mongols were indicted by a federal grand jury with various alleged crimes, including racketeering, murder, in aid of racketeering, attempted murder, kidnapping, robbery, and large-scale drug trafficking. Early this in the year, the same chapter had 19 members and associates indicted on charges of racketeering, conspiracy, murder, drug-related and related crimes. So they had to repeat that, you notice that. As of 8 p.m. Saturday, there were no violent crimes reported in the Fort Worth Stockyards area. And, of course, you hear from 
the Bar Patreon, which again, you guys got to go out and see the Love Shack and the White Elephant. You got to give them kudos for standing behind fucking the Moggles and uh, serving them and shit like that. Because I guarantee, you know, that's why you've seen all these signs going up, the no club color shit. I bet you had one of these prick freaking uh, people in uniform going door to door saying, hey, we need you to do this. And you know what? They're probably taking the names of the ones who didn't so they can harass them, throw in a building inspector or some shit like that to harass the businesses because they didn't bend to what they had to say. You know, that's just like this past uh, Sturges where the casinos and all that shit were threatened with their freaking uh, uh, casino ga gambling license because the cops didn't want the angels over there. So that's the way your government does shit. They like threatening people. If you don't do this or do what we say, then we're going to do this A, B, and C against you. So, as you can see, this is all a big blow-up by the cops. And it's just ridiculous. It really is. Do people who actually have some sanity believe all the hype that cops put out? I really, You know what? I Because re I get some of them comments on... Uh, the YouTube channel about, uh, well, everybody believes that uh, clubs are gang members and they're all freaking uh, drug dealers and blah, blah, blah. You know, how how much hypocrisy is really in that fucking uh, shit right there? Again, for everything a fucking club member does, so does a goddamn cop. You know, right now in Rosemont, uh, which is outside of Chicago... And I brought this up in another video. A sergeant was going around freaking robbing gas stations, man. You know, armed robbery, all that bullshit. He's facing, what, 25 to life with all the armed robbery charges? And then up in Milwaukee with this other cop with the sexual assault with the raping people. You know, give me a freaking break, man. You cannot, you cannot... Freaking take a few people out of an organization and say they represent the whole damn organization. If that was the case, we'd be all doing that with cops. And you know what? Some cops are good, I guess, and <laughs> most cops are bad. See, I think I'll premiere a video because uh, there's a personal issue uh, going on where a cop and it's out in my area, a cop arrested a 71-year-old woman claiming that she hit him with a garage door. Well, come to find out, the garage door never came near the motherfucker because there was a video there and he never knew it. So, again, does that make that whole department and shit like that fucking all bad? No, it's only that one cop. And that's the same thing that goes with freaking clubs. You know, I think the ones who are out there bitching about clubs being all gangs or being uh, criminals and shit are actually the ones who couldn't get in a club. They couldn't take the time to prospect. They couldn't or they weren't accepted. And I think that's where it comes from. Those are the type that out there are bitching about clubs being criminals and blah, 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 bunching them all together. And, you know what, out there complaining about them. That's what I really think. I really think that's what's going on with these type of people is they couldn't get in the club and they're pissed off. <laughs> what else can you say, man? You know, either that or they're fucking sheep and they're buying into everything the news media tells them. You know, if that's the freaking case, which, you know what, we know in America we got a lot of them assholes, is not only clubs would be, you got your moose lodges, your elks lodges, and anybody who does anything bad in any of those organizations, well, then the elks are criminals, or the masons are criminals. You know, that's what it basically comes down to, is you can't group everybody freaking together. Yeah, there's shit that goes on in the 1% of world. And you know what? I'm not going to sit here and baby fucking code it for you and tell you there's not. There's shit that goes down. And you have to be able to distinguish between the individuals and the nation as a whole if they're a bigger club or a chapter. 
you, you got to be able to freaking, you know, like this Tennessee thing. Do you really think that the Mongols National approves of people getting killed <laughs> over this? You, you think they really approve of a woman getting shot in the freaking head? You really believe that? I can't. I do not think a national would approve of a fucking chapter going out there and blowing off somebody's head. I just don't. So, whatever happened down there, and they haven't even been to trial yet, and you got a freaking, you know what, this is America. You got, it's, it's guilty until proven innocent, so at least let the fucking people have their trial before going out there being assholes and listening to this mainstream media bullshit. At least give them their day in freaking court before you go and do anything. But do you actually believe if they are found guilty that the national is responsible for the actions of somebody's, you know, uh, in Tennessee's fucking, you know, domain? No. That's just like that all bullshit that went down with that one, uh, civil trial that, uh, what the fuck, with Iron Order. You really think, you know, I know everybody hates Iron Order and shit like that, you know, blah, 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 that is what it is. But if you take them out of the equation and put another club in there, like a one percenter club or some shit, do you think that that national was responsible from some asshole pushing the fucking uh, broad in the middle of the fucking road? Which, by the way, was a fucking fight. So, I don't think it was intentional, but anyway, do you think they're responsible for that guy's action where they start losing clubhouses, start losing money, and shit like that? And that's one of the things that was behind that whole case. Now, as far as my understanding is, Iron Order don't want to have fucking that much property. You know, they don't own shit, and it's rent or whatever. But you put in one of these bigger one percenter clubs... You got clubs that own fucking real estate at that point where an attachment or a judgment can actually have some bite against these clubs. And you got to, people got to wake up to that. You know, civil forfeitures right now is a fucking racket that the government uses. You imagine if they can throw civil shit at them? You know, you got to wake up to that fact. But anyway, I really appreciate you. Uh, coming on this Sunday with me, and uh, Motorcycle Madhouse is going to have an all-new episode on Tuesday. Uh, this past Saturday, we had a rerun because we got real busy over here uh, with this Fort Worth stuff and what's going on uh, with our other uh, engagements and shit like that, like on social media and stuff like that, but uh, I really appreciate all the orders for the book. You guys are kicking ass with that, man. Also... We got new t-shirts coming. Uh, you'll, I'll actually put a description in the box below. And uh, actually, I'll uh, put it up here on screen, too, so you can see it. You know, kick-ass design in front, and you get the logo in the back of Insane Throttle Biker News. You know, we get uh, just a couple bucks off the thing, but it's something to get our name out there. And uh, we'd really appreciate you guys supporting us by grabbing you a shirt and shit like that. And uh, with that, I'll talk to you guys later. You guys be safe. Have a good weekend. Eat some pussy and uh, have some fun.